So here we are back with The Witch from Mercury, but this time we'll be taking a look at the Ad Stella side story manga, Vanitas Heart. Written by Kozo Yoniyama, who was an editor for various anime I guess. I actually couldn't find a lot of information about him to be honest. Illustration was done by Chika Tojo, probably best known for doing the illustrations for the saga of Tanya the Evil, but also did a couple Code Geass manga. This manga started publication in the Gundam Ace magazine March 25th of this year, and as of recording this video, has three chapters. Vanitas Heart takes place in Ad Stella Year 106, five years after the Vanitas Instant and Prologue episode, and 16 years before the main story. The story follows two characters, a young boy named Kiyu Lavat, whose body is too big for his heart, and Vilda Mirin, a former Vanitas Institute researcher and survivor, whose journey leads her to nurturing the young boy's heart. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the prologue chapter and chapter 1, and I'll try to keep up with these videos as chapters release, which look to be about every month or so. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. So we'll be starting out with the prologue chapter, however it mostly just recaps the Vanitas incident with commentary from Vilda. She talks about the progress of humanity, from early primitive planes giving us a taste of the skies, to now needing of stronger limbs and a mightier heart to reach beyond into space. That's where Gund comes in, the augmentation of the human body. To replace bodily function to be more fit for space, and the sharing of information utilizing the newly found permit element in the solar system. And with it, the cursing of this technology for military use, the Gund format. With the path humanity has chosen, Gund should have been a blessing for all, but the Vanitas incident shows what tragedy it would bring. This kind of dialogue is spread across what is essentially the prologue episode of the anime. Until the last five pages, where we get taken to five years after the Vanitas incident, Ad Stella Year 106, on Earth. Kiyu is making breakfast for himself and Vilda. He attempts to wake Vilda up, but she asks for five more minutes, telling him that her body doesn't produce orexin in the morning. So it isn't that she doesn't want to wake up, but that she can't, and that's why she needs five more minutes. They finally start their breakfast, though Kiyu says he has a pounding in his chest, and Vilda comically decides to give him a checkup. That's our primer for Vanitas Heart, so let's move on to chapter one. Chapter one begins with Vilda performing the gun surgery on someone, most likely around the time of the Vanitas incident, since the next nine pages go over it again. Afterwards, we get Kiyu sitting atop a trailer, drawing in his sketchbook. I'll give more of my thoughts on this later, so stay tuned to the end. Vilda calls him down, as they need to get moving. She mentions how cheerful he is, and he says he feels taller standing atop of the trailer. Continuing on about the sky and that he'd like to go into space, Vilda says he's too young for that, but he says he'll get stronger, to her reassurance. He attempts to help her with packing stuff onto shelves, though she mentions his height as an issue. At this point, we don't even have an age for Kiyu, but he looks around 12 or so, and is about a couple feet shorter than Vilda. She tells him to leave this stuff to the grown-ups, much to his frustration. After packing up, they get rolling. Their truck, and themselves, need fuel. Kiyu asks why they aren't going straight to the station. Vilda explains they need to avoid the northern route due to terrorist attacks, a common thing we know Earth has been struggling with. She goes on to say that there's a big station along the coastline, and that they'll need to stock up on food and fuel for their truck. Speaking of their truck, they have a Haro in it too, which is always nice to see. We get some more commentary about Earth, that it has long roads that are the manifestation of tracks laid by mankind's history, how they want to move on to space. She also goes on about the Vanitas incident, with the endless path the researchers, who were dubbed witches, walked, and how this has led to her journey with Kiyu, and how it has no sign of ending. They then finally arrive at the station, with Kiyu surprised at how big it is. Vilda says it isn't just for charging, but also maintenance for transport vehicles. She points out the maintenance batteries and how they're standardized to be used with most large vehicles. She also goes on about the Continental Transportation Network, controlled by the space exploration company Ropley Corp. Vehicles that use the station belong to subsidiary companies under Ropley. Kiyu says he'll go buy a battery, but again gets shot down by Vilda, saying to leave it to the adults. Since their vehicle isn't under Ropley, Kiyu asks if they'll be found out, but Vilda says the data on their truck has been falsified, so they should be fine. They start charging their truck and Vilda goes shopping. She remarks that the supplies are scarce, and that the terrorist attacks must be impacting it. She says the truck will take 30 minutes to finish charging, and that she'd like to get out of there as fast as they can. She then sees Kiyu buying like 20 cups of coffee for her, truly a kid doing their best for their parent. She asks what he's doing, and he says she likes coffee, so he stocked up for her. Vilda takes this opportunity to teach him something. Using each cup as an example essentially teaches him to take things into consideration, that just because she likes coffee, maybe she doesn't want any at the moment, or if they should use their limited funds on so much, or if she really likes coffee in the first place. 
basically to think about all those aspects. She asks him again if they really need all this coffee, but Kiyu responds by saying he'll drink it all, which wasn't really the point, but still funny. Afterwards, he goes to get some ice cream, while Vilda gets questioned by some station workers about the cargo in their trailer. She says it's industrial materials, as she filed, but they want to confirm it. She says they don't have authority to inspect cargo going through the station. They mention Anima Logistics being a subcontractor for materials, and the truck does have the logo of said company. However, they are being suspected of supplying weapons to a terrorist group. The workers sympathize with the terrorists, understanding their frustration with the higher-ups, but says they're all Earthians and have to deal with it. They go on to say special exceptions were made to make such inspections. She wonders if they're being diligent or just trying to make some extra cash. Either way, they have to make plans for dealing with the increase in terrorist activity since it's raising security measures across Earth, which makes it a pain for them. She can fabricate all the fake information she needs and bypass security systems as long as she has time. Anything to avoid being pursued as a witch. Kiyu returns but sees Vilda having some trouble, so he decides to do something any aspiring child who pilots a giant robot does, and that's to hop in the Gundam they've been hiding in the trailer, the Gundam Jew. You know, this thing with the big arm, which is called the Tiger's Hand. She was about to attempt to weasel out of the situation, but the container opens up and Kiyu and the Gundam Jew tells Vilda to get the trailer going. He tells her to trust him, that he'll handle it somehow, which is the gung-ho behavior I love to see. Vilda gets in the trailer and they begin to dip. The station deploys the mobile suit security squad to give chase though, outnumbering them 7-ish to 1. The station then seals the gates, going into lockdown. Vilda explains that they were disguising the cargo because they couldn't let anyone see the Gundam. Kiyu shrugs it off, saying all they have to do is escape before they can get investigated. She says even if they wanted to, they don't have enough energy, since they couldn't even begin charging their trailer. Kiyu then remembers this fact. As the mobile suits close in, Vilda asks if Kiyu has a plan. Full of gusto, he says he'll take them out in a flash. Vilda says he can't kill them and that they aren't carrying the Gundam around to fight. With engaging in combat out of the question, they wonder how they can get out of their situation. We then get a small flashback of Vilda at the Vanitas incident. Shijima tells her to survive, and not to give up on Dr. Cardo's wish. Right after, we get my favorite panel of the whole thing so far, the Gundam Jew beating on this mobile suit. Truly the strongest Gundam in the entire series. Kiyu thinks about what they can do, and notices the batteries from earlier. He says he'll grab one for the trailer, but Vilda says the chance of success is too low. Kiyu interrupts her, saying they'll be fine, that he can do it. She asks why he thinks that, but only says it's just a feeling. We then learn that the link with the Gundarm and omnipotence brought by the augmentation of limbs fuels Kiyu with confidence. That the longing for adulthood and sense of powerlessness that's unique to childhood, with the danger of obtaining a larger body, in this case the Gundam Jiu, requires strong mental support. This mental support being Kiyu and Vilda together. He reassures her that it'll all work out. She says it's better to try than to do nothing, anything to continue their journey together. The mobile suits catch up to them and get authorized to use beam rifles. Vilda warns Kiyu that they're coming, and that it's time to go all out. Kiyu grabs the giant arm from the trailer and blocks the mobile suit's beam attack with it. In a nice callback to Gwell's first duel with Suleta, the beam gets deflected in the same way, causing damage to the station behind him. Kiyu then fires a beam from the arm, causing damage to the crane and disrupting the mobile suits. He takes one of the batteries and grabs the crane, ramming it into the gate to make their escape. He attaches the giant arm to the Gundam's back, which also looks to act as a booster, and they get out. They manage to seal the gate on their way out to stop the mobile suits from pursuing, but Vilda remarks that it was like a kid rummaging through a toy box, as she has a spilled cup of coffee on her face. She then tells them to be on the lookout until they're in the clear. Kiyu asks if he did a great job, and Vilda reassures him he did. She comments on the balance between the body and mind, but that Kiyu's body is too big for his heart, referring to the Gundam Lefrith Jew as his body. You did very well, she said, as their journey is far from over. And that's it for chapter 1. A long first chapter, being about 76 pages long. Chapter 2 is a lot shorter, so the following videos will likely be much shorter too. There's a few details I'd like to touch on. The story takes place on Earth 16 years before the main story. I would really like to see our characters run into or hear about certain other characters we know of from the anime story, like the older Donna Fold members or others from Earth. Obviously we won't be seeing any of the Astacasia students, since at this point of the story, most of them are either babies or not even born yet. Perhaps she'll run into Prospera or Balmeria at some point. In any case, I'm excited about any kind of callbacks or ties to the anime story. Speaking of the Dawn of Fold, Kiyu having a sketchbook makes me think of Noria. Something I was thinking about when I saw that was if the story progresses through the years, maybe Kiyu will meet Noria as a kid, and might be the one who inspires her to write in her own sketchbook. Just a theory. Perhaps Kiyu will even have ties to the Dawn of Fold, meeting Sophie, Olcott, and the other members. Something to keep in mind moving forward. 
Now this is something I really love about this manga so far, is how gung-ho and optimistic Kiyu is. Big, child taking on the world against all odds kinda energy. It'll work out. Despite the situation is something I always connect with. He also seems to be very good at piloting the Gundam Jew, so I'm guessing Vilda did some gunned work on him. Another detail is that Kiyu didn't have any permit markings while piloting, which makes me wonder if the Gundam Jew has the same curse as the other Gundams. Maybe Vilda found a way to eliminate those issues, but we'll see. I also wasn't too crazy about the big arm thing when I first saw it earlier this year, but I was sold on it this chapter. Using it as a beam rifle, shield, and even attaching it to the back to hold and use as a booster is pretty sweet. I like things with multiple utility like that. Can't wait to see more of it. All in all, this chapter set things up great. It looks like it'll be a much more lighthearted story, given the good comedy moments. Let me know what you think about this chapter, the characters, and the manga in general. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'll be putting a lot more thought and effort into these chapter videos as opposed to my anime episode recaps. Mainly since I'm relying on fan translations and upload times will vary. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel for further content. I would greatly appreciate it and it's the best way to support the channel right now. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.